No good deed is the product of selflessness. And Minister Sorslay's intervention on the Woolfort's behalf is no exception. In exchange for their livelihoods, Serenoa and his entourage must transport Sorslay's illicit salt across their borders. With no pride left to bolster them, they have little choice but to obey. Preparations for the journey are a somber affair. The cart's ready, my lord. As are the disguises. None will suspect us to be aught but common merchants. Good. Then let us prepare for our departure. Oh, just look at what we've been reduced to. Skullduggery and deceit. Whatever honor we had is losing its luster by the day. Charakter so weit abgelegen in den Bergen gibt eine junge Akrobatin den Geröll eines Sondervorstellungen. Hey, what's a child like you doing in such a lonely place? I have nowhere else to go. Where are your parents? They died years ago. My lord. My name is Serenoa. What's yours? Picoletta. Picoletta? You throw that ball with such skill. Because it's my job. When I throw this ball, everyone applauds. Well, they used to. But the circus is gone now, so I'm all on my own. What are you doing here, mister? We are trying to put an end to this war. I hate war. War made everyone go away. You're really gonna end the war? Then let me go with you. Uh... I can throw my ball and help you fight the bad people. Oops. There goes my tummy grumbling again. My lord, we cannot simply leave this poor child here. I know. All right then, Piccoletta. Come with us. But before we go fight the bad people, let us fill our bellies. After that, perhaps you could show us some tricks with your ball. Sure thing. That's what I'm best at. So, Charakterepisode. Während der Hochwasserschutzarbeiten am Fluss plaudert Erado über die guten alten Zeiten mit Benedict. Once we have stacked those sandbags, we should be well fortified against even the fiercest deluge. Leave it to me. This old wolf has some vim in him yet. some of those muscles since before I can remember. I must say, when I saw the enormity of the task before us, I did not think we would finish in mere bells. I had braced myself for a full day of labor, at the very least. Thank Benedict for that. We'd still be searching for weaknesses in our perimeter had he not been guiding us. Indeed. But let us not understate Eridor's feats of strength. Come now, Eridor. How many times must I tell you to be delicate with the sandbags? We only have so many at hand. I hear you, I hear you. I'll treat them as delicately as my lady love, in the absence of one. Now is not the time for jests, Eridor. If you don't want me complaining and you don't want me jesting, then I guess I'll just shut my mouth. 
To hear them trading barbs like children, you would never think they work so well together. Wisdom and strength. Two pillars that keep House Wolfort standing strong. Wisdom, eh? He wasn't always that way. Took him plenty of failing to get where he is now. I find that difficult to believe. Is there something you wish to share with us, Eridor? Might be. Maybe you've forgotten the folly of 20 years past, but my mind is a steel trap. And what's our task for today? We are to deliver this message to Lady Destra with all haste. Seems simple enough. Send a bird. I would not trust a bird in this rain. A horse would be more reliable, and swifter besides. Is that so? I respectfully disagree, my friend. Either way, I'm not gonna be the one nursing you back to health if you catch the chills. Shall we make it a wager, then? Send a bird, and we shall see who reaches Lady Destra first. You had best hurry. What? Benedict! Off he goes. Well then, where are those damned hawks? As I recall, Benedict arrived at around the same time as the hawk. If it were a sunny day, he might have won. Ah, the folly of youth. Many of our best days were spent in Lord Simon's service. We made many such wagers, in an attempt to get into Lord Simon and Lady Destra's good graces. <laughs> I remember when... I believe we have had enough reminiscing for one day, Eridor. Don't be such a harsh taskmaster, Benedict. Where's the harm in a story? Ask me that again, when the floodwaters break through our meager fortifications. There is much to do, and little time to do it. Wouldn't you agree, Anna? M me I, uh... Old friends or old enemies? Sometimes it is hard to tell with those two. Whatever the case, our work's done for the day. And there's nothing like a hard drink after hard labor. You two care to join me? I would love to. Please, regale me with more tales of your youth. I see no harm in one drink. <laughs> Let's be off, then. Shall we invite Benedict along? You'd only be wasting your breath. Now that you mention it, I do not believe I have ever seen you two sharing drinks. Spirits cloud the mind, so I rarely drink. When I do partake, however, I prefer to do so in quiet. I fear Eridor would only spoil that. Heute machen mit Erador gönnt sich im Feldlager etwas Ruhe. Da bittet ihn plötzlich Ugeto um Rat. Seems as if the troubles never cease. I'd kill for a drop of ale. I take it you and Benedict have seen your share of trouble. You have both served House Wolfort for many years, yes? Aye. We both served Lord Simon since we were green between the ears. Through the good times and the bad. To see him now, you wouldn't believe the stories of what we got up to in our tender years. Even then, though, he was always the schemer. Always drawn me into his fanciful plots. Has so much changed since then? <laughs> I don't reckon so. In any case, was there something you wanted to ask me? There was. The other day, 
Benedict posed quite the strange question to me. Where snowbell blossoms bloom? Indeed. I thought perhaps you had seen trace of the flowers while scouting with Flugi. I've spotted clusters of them in the deep mountain passes before, but not of late. So it is as I thought. They have ever been a rare sight, even more so in recent years. I had thought to procure one, but it may be wise to temper my expectations in that regard. Life always finds a way to flourish. I am certain Anna and I can find one before long. I would not have you chasing my idle fancies. You both have more vital duties to attend to. I... of course. So, Benedict's looking for a snowbell blossom. What's so peculiar about that? Nothing. If it were anyone else asking. However, I think you'd agree that Benedict is not the type to go picking flowers on a whim. They say that when a snowbell blooms... That moment is frozen in time. Aye. Precisely. You and Benedict both never fail to surprise. But of all flowers, why the snowbell? Does he have some lady love I'm unaware of? I can't speak to that, but I'll tell you one thing, Hewitt. We've all got moments locked away and placed close to our hearts. You, me, even a stubborn-headed mule like Benedict. Like the Snowbell, we want him frozen like that forever. And like the Snowbell, they're liable to shatter if we let another handle him carelessly. I understand. I apologize if I was too forward. Let us forget the matter. No, it isn't you that needs to apologize. I'm always telling Benedict no one likes being lectured. It was enlightening. I see you and Benedict are true friends. For lack of a better word, I. Bring me a draft to ale, and I'll tell you all about our younger days. At least, what I can remember. I recall Benedict wasn't nearly as capable as he is now. Hmm. I may have to take you up on that offer. Do you really reckon snowbells are still blooming somewhere out there? Perhaps. Though I've not seen them in this region, they may still bloom in the southern reaches. In other words, a trek and a half from here. Give up the search, my friend. Rosa Bara trinkt mit Erado und plaudert über ihr Leben. Ah, that's the good stuff. Ain't no one can pour a pint like you. I take coin for drink, not compliments. It's hard enough to keep this place running on my own as it is. Need me to lend a hand? Thought you'd never ask. You can start by washing the dishes, then restocking our foodstuffs, fixing up that wobbly table, and... Aye, leave it to me. Ha, <laughs> I'm only playing. I'd never put a paying customer to labor. But that's an awful lot of work for any one person. Ever give thought to finding someone with whom you might share the burden? You can stop right there. The last thing I need is anyone else complicating my life. Sounds like you're speaking from experience. I had myself a someone once, you know? Special-like. Till he left me for a specialer someone. Raised my son Theo all by myself after that. He'd be a man grown now. If the war hadn't taken him. Uh, forgive me, Hasabara. Didn't mean to go drudging up painful memories. 
No need for apologies. I don't know anyone who doesn't have a thing or two in their past that haunts them. In truth, I'm more exhausted than anything. Must be the years taking their toll. Ain't got nothing to do with age, and everything to do with the hardships you've overcome. <laughs> more impressive than an old soldier drowning his sorrows in mead. <laughs> what kind of barkeep am I? Letting my poor patron wallow. Well, sometimes wallowing's good for the soul. Come on, have a round with me. My treat. Took you long enough to make the offer. Now, what shall we toast to? Hmm. How about... to your son? I... to Theo. Julio und Erdor stoßen während ihrer Patrouille auf etwas, das sie nicht ignorieren können. Please, you can't take our wheat. We just sent food the other day. Silence. Lord Walford has ordered the requisition of all provisions. You wouldn't dare disobey your lord, would you? Of course not. I... I just can't believe Lord Walford would command such a thing. Are you accusing me, a noble woman of Glenbrook, of lying? <laughs> How dare you, peasant. Mayhap we should see what the commotion is about. Mind telling us what's going on? <gasps> well... If it isn't Captain Eridor, thank you for all that you do to keep these lands safe. You're one of the lot what recently fled from the Crown City, ain't you? Just so, yes. I came to humbly lend what aid I could to Lord Wolfford and deliver on the provisions I promised. What is your quarrel with these people? If you could explain the situation, we'd be more than happy to lend what aid we can. Please, I beg of you, don't take our food. It's all we have. I've always known Lord Walford to care for his people above all. Why would he do this to us? What madness is this? Lord Saranoa has strictly forbidden commandeering food from the common folk. Surely you aren't asking these good people to relinquish their stores to you in his name. I am simply gathering provisions on Lord Walford's behalf, as I promised. Honestly, he should be grateful. Grateful? <laughs> He'd be right in the face if he saw what you were doing. Ain't no way he ordered it. On the contrary, you are acting in violation of your Lord's decree. You cannot overlook your actions. You will come with us and be jailed. There you will await judgment for your crimes. Nonsense is this! I am a noblewoman of Glenbrook! How dare you try to order me about, you self-important little man! You've no authority over me! Look, I ain't disagreeing, but are you sure we should accost her without seeking Lord Serenoa's counsel first? We haven't that luxury. The longer she is allowed to roam free, the more the people will suffer, and our Lord's good name be sullied. We must show the people that unethical acts will not go unpunished. Take her away. You will pay for your impudence! Can't believe there are scoundrels out here using House Wolfort's name for ill gain. You've done us all proud today, Yulio. Thank you ever so much, my lord. We'd be facing starvation if you hadn't stepped in. She really had us fooled. We should have known Lord Walford is too kind a man to order anything like that. If you are ever troubled again, please seek me out. I shall ensure that any wrongs committed against you are set right. Dann haben wir noch Archibald. Er erzählt Anno von seinen Erlebnissen im Salzkrieg. Master Archibald, is there something on your mind? Ah. God has be good. I must be getting on in years for you to be able to sneak up on me like that. 
What troubles you? I was only reminiscing. Windy days like these tend to blow my mind back a couple of decades or more. <laughs> reminiscing about what? The Salt Iron War. Hard to believe it's been 30 whole years. Some days I almost forget my time as one of the saintly seven. I defended the Citadel of Sand through the conflict. I was there when Esfrost attacked. A number of Roselin prisoners who tried to escape the source were there too. Including Our Lady Frederica's dear mother. What's this? She stayed behind all by herself to help the countless numbers of her fellow Roselle flee. That's how she was captured. But I knew we couldn't hold the Citadel. So I helped her and her friends escape in secret before the enemy attacked. The wind blew just as hard that night as it's blowing now. I'll never forget watching the Roselle caked all over in mud as they slipped away into the dark. So you didn't want innocents to get caught up in the coming battle? It never settled right with me. The way the goddess's teachings permitted abuse of the Roselle for the supposed sins of their past. A person's life isn't worth more or less just because of the conditions of their birth. More than anything, I was moved by the selfless acts of Lady Frederica's mother. She reminded me of what I had once aspired to be. She was able to do what I never could. Risk her life to save her friends. I couldn't let someone like that die. Not on my watch. It wasn't long until the other saintly seven discovered what I'd done. They branded me a traitor, stripped me of my title, and sentenced me to death. Of course, I slipped out of their clutches before they could have my head. <laughs> I wandered for a while before taking up life as a merchant under the King of Glenbrook's patronage. I never knew you and Lady Frederica's mother shared such a past. Well, it is in the past. Anyway, let us return. This cold night wind is making my old bones ache something fierce. <laughs>